Hey friends, my name is Scott Hanselman. Now I'm a Windows developer. I've used Windows for many, many years. I've also used Mac and Linux for years as well, but I keep coming back to Windows because frankly, I like Windows. Um, maybe you don't, and that's fine. This video isn't for you. But um, if you're someone who doesn't like Windows because it doesn't let you develop your Linux applications or your open source applications, uh, but you, you like the Windows interface, you like the hotkeys, you like Explorer and things like that, you might be like me. Uh, in fact, I enjoy developing on Windows. I enjoy Windows as a user. I use Photoshop and different Windows applications. But for a long time, I wanted to be able to run my Linux apps and my open source apps. So I tried things like Sigwin and it didn't really work out for me. But now that Windows 10 supports the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can run actual Linux applications on Windows for real. Uh, and they have a new open source terminal, which is really cool. It replaces the console. and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I've started using Windows full-time. It's my main development machine, but I'm moving seamlessly between containers and Linux and Windows itself uh, in a way that really hasn't been possible until now. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set that up. Uh, we're going to get the terminal. We're going to get uh, Docker. We'll get WSL 2 installed using the Windows subsystem for Linux version 2 that is now out in Windows 10 Insiders Fast, unless you're reading this in the future and it's been developed. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look. Okay, now I happen to be on Insiders Fast, so I'm using Windows 10 Insiders Fast. You can see here I'm on uh, version uh, 18980. You can actually hit the Windows key and press Windows R and type in Winver and see the build that you have. This is the build that's coming out soon. You might have this, uh, you might have a newer version if you're watching this video in the future. So if you've got a build of Windows that's in the 1800 uh, 18,900 plus range, then you've probably got some pretty cool stuff that you may not have turned on yet. Uh, a couple of things that we want to talk about first are WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, as well as how it works with Docker, and also VS Code, specifically the VS Code remote extensions. And then I want to talk about the Windows Terminal. These are the things that you need. So a newish Windows 10, I say Insiders Fast. Windows Subsystem for Linux, turn it on. Docker, get the tech preview. Visual Studio Code's remote extension and the Windows Terminal. If you have those things, you're in a really good place. Uh, let's talk about that. Okay, first thing I want to do is go to the Start menu and type Features. I'm going to go here where it says turn Windows features on and off. And at the very bottom of this here, it says Windows subsystem for Linux and the virtual machine platform. Now you can do that in this user interface if you want, or you can go to the Windows store, just type in search and search for Linux. It's just a regular old Windows store. I search for Linux. And you can see here we've got run Linux on Windows. Lots of different Linuxes. Uh, lots and lots of free ones, a couple that cost. This one's really great, Penguin Linux. I paid for this one. It's actually a custom build of Linux just for the Windows subsystem for Linux with a lot of really, really great add-ons. Definitely worth the money. You can grab Ubuntu for free. When you click on Ubuntu, this is coming actually from the folks that made Ubuntu, make sure that you click More. You can see here there's a line enable Windows optional feature. That's actually the PowerShell script that you would type at an administrative PowerShell that would turn this on. It's the same thing as going into that dialog on Windows feature and clicking the checkbox. That's the way to programmatically do that. Next thing I want you to do is search for terminal in the Windows Store and look for the Windows Terminal. This is actually an open source terminal that's currently in preview and this is a just getting started. I think they're on version 0 0.3 or 4. Uh, but this is really great. So if I launch the terminal, I'm going to go ahead and close that. This is a replacement for what we think of as the console or the DOS box. If I type cmd.exe, I get the, the original DOS box. And I'm saying that in quotes. If I type in PowerShell, I get that as well. If I type Ubuntu, I get that as well. All of these are consoles that are hosted by a thing called ConHost. That's a thing that's been in Windows for a very, very long time. I want to make sure that you understand that a console and a shell are different things. This terminal is a new console with 
drop downs. It does cool animations and stuff if you want. I can have a Visual Studio PowerShell. I can have Ubuntu. I can have an Azure Cloud Shell. I can hit settings and go into a JSON file that I can edit. And that JSON file allows me to have whatever profiles make me happy. So take a look at this. I'm just going to open up my JSON file. I happen to use Visual Studio as my JSON file editor. So here I've gone and edited my profile to include Ubuntu with the font that I want, with the command line that allows me to use the Windows subsystem for Linux. Now, the Windows subsystem for Linux has a little executable that you can use to control it. So if you go out to DOS or PowerShell or whatever, and you type WSL dash dash list, you can see here I've actually got three different Linuxes. I can get to these three different Linuxes however I want. I can run them by saying WSL dash D. I can say W Linux, for example, and now I'm in the Penguin W Linux. This one includes an X server, so if I want to, I can go and run X applications. Now if I hit exit, I'm back out at the DOS prompt. And I say DOS in quotes because it's not really DOS. In this case, it's PowerShell. I can say WSL dash uh, Debian. And now I'm in Debian. Very, very fast. WSL2 is really interesting because it's actually real Linux. This is not any kind of uh, emulated Linux. It's actually using uh, a tiny, tiny, tiny virtual machine. You can actually go and see if I bring Task Manager over here. VMM is using about 500 megs of RAM. It's a little tiny mini virtual machine. It starts up like that, two, three, four seconds tops, cold, and less than a second hot, which is really, really cool. You'll notice also the directory I'm at right there is at mount C. If I actually go to the mount point in my Linux and I say slash mount, see my other drives as well. So I have full access to my drives, and then I've got my Ubuntu Linux um, file system right here. Now, if I want to, I could go and, you know, apt get whatever, apt get install node or Ruby or whatever makes me happy. But uh, I don't necessarily want to use Vim if I want to, you know, more power to you if you like Vim. But I want to use something like Visual Studio Code to do my, uh, my editing. So what if I was going to go and do something in Node, right? I'll do something a little bit different. I'll say make directory, hey Node. Okay, and let's go into that. Notice that this is in my Ubuntu file system. I've got nothing in there right now, and I'm going to type code. Now, I have Visual Studio Code installed. When I hit code, though, I'm in Ubuntu. Watch this. It launches Visual Studio Code in Windows. Okay, in the lower left corner here, it says WSL Ubuntu. It actually knows that I'm in Ubuntu, that it was launched from Ubuntu. And if I go and say open folder, something really interesting happens. And this blurs the lines between Windows and Linux and why Windows 10 is such a compelling place to do development right now. That slash home slash Scott is not C colon user slash Scott, which is my Windows home folder. Instead, it's something else. If I go down here and look at my network, you see how I've got the different things in my in my house, but if I come over here and I type in Explorer, I mean Ubuntu now, dot .exe, look what happens. WSL, Ubuntu, there's my file system. So we're actually running a Plan 9 network server, which allows me to have access to these files. So let's go ahead and watch that. I'm going to just keep that over here off to the corner. So I've got Ubuntu, real Ubuntu. I've got my application here that has not been created yet inside of Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to just say file, new file. We'll just call it like server. Uh, we'll just save it. I'll just, I'm going to drop in some node code and I'll hit save. Server.js. Okay, so we're going to save a little JavaScript file there. Okay, take a look at this. Over here, there it is, server.js. It's in I'm looking at the Ubuntu file system over the network, which isn't really a network though, right? Because what we're doing here is we're talking all local. WSL manages all of this. And this is really, really important because you want the best of both worlds. You want the best of Linux and the best of Windows. Uh, Visual Studio Code knows I'm talking to Ubuntu, okay? 
So, check this out. I'm just going to go ahead and hit F5. It says activating extension. It says, hey, what are you doing? What's going on here? We're using Node. Starts up running port 8000. Let me open up Edge. Now, this is not the Edge that is not uh, any fun to run. This is actually what I like to call Edgium. This is the canary version of Edge that is now using uh, Chromium at its heart. And I'm going to type in localhost. And what are we on here? Port 8000. Like that. There's the hello world of my Node app running within the context of the Windows subsystem for Linux. This is interesting because this is actually kind of a tiny virtual machine, but not. Eh, it doesn't feel like a virtual machine. It didn't take... 15 minutes to load up. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to manage it. I just typed Ubuntu or typed Bash, and I get real Linux on real Windows. When I said localhost, though, is it really localhost? Well, it turns out they're, they're handling that for us. Localhost port 8000 is actually brokering through, kind of punching through in over to my Windows subsystem for Linux, but I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to set anything up. It just works. Now I'm going to go and just drop in a breakpoint, hit refresh again. Again, I'm in Edgium, Edge, New Edge. I don't want to call it Edge, but Chrome. I'm looking at my file system for Linux within Windows Explorer. I'm now at a breakpoint inside of Visual Studio Code on Windows, but Linux is doing the work. And again, if you want to prove it, just type HTOP, see what's going on, and you can see, look, Visual Studio Code Server, what's happening is part of Visual Studio Code is running in Linux, on WSL, part of it. I'm actually using control scroll on my mouse here. So check this out. Let's, if you're going to look at something and really get it, take the screenshot of that, my friends. Check it out. Four panes. Pretty slick. Hello world. Breakpoint. There's the work happening in HTOP in Ubuntu, and there's the file on disk. Pretty fantastic. This is just one example. It could be Python, it could be Ruby, it could be whatever. Uh, the other thing that's fun to point out, by the way, if I go ahead and maximize this, I'll open up another tab for Ubuntu, and I'll take Docker images. I currently don't have Docker running, but I'm going to go and just bring up Docker for Windows here and hit Start. This is the technical preview of Docker. Everything I'm running is free and available to be downloaded. So I just started up Docker. And now, look, Docker, you can now run Docker from within Windows or WSL. I say Docker Images. Look at that. I've got Docker here in Ubuntu, real Docker, doing the real work. Uh, now we can go and do maybe like a Hello World image. So I'll say Docker Run Hello World. Cool. There's the Hello World. I can go back over into Windows, say Docker Images. See the same thing. Docker works there as well pretty slick. So I could go and run Docker or do whatever makes me happy. That is all the things that I wanted to show you today. So we've had the Windows Terminal. We've got Docker. I've got remote development running on Windows using Ubuntu. But of course, I can have other Linuxes if I want. And I can use the new Windows Terminal, which is also open source. You can check out all these things and more if you go up to my blog and check them out. I've written about the new console. I've written about Docker Desktop and WSL2. All these things you can make happen on your Windows machine. Uh, it's really a very lovely time to be a developer on Windows, whether you're a Linux developer or Node or Python or Ruby or whatever makes you happy. Um, leave a comment uh, if you have a cool tip or trick on how to be a great developer. And uh, maybe I'll do a video on it. Thanks so much.